Hi everybody. Today is the end of the early spring 2021 uh, production run. Uh, yesterday and the day before yesterday it was raining constantly. So uh, it's the second rain episode we've had during the season. So we can consider that it's now the end. And so with the end of the season come a crucial step in the tea making. And this is the assessing each of the batches that we've made and then um, doing the proper blends for our teas. So we are at the assessing step now and we've gathered all of our teas um, in our greenhouse. Mm, we'll keep them here for one day that will allow the batches to dry out, especially considering there's been uh, two days of rain uh, in the past days. And so, well, it's, it's always nice every year. I always like to, um, to see this, to see all our teas gathered here. This year we've made about 500 kilograms of tea. Uh, you can see here that these are uh, the, the Shanghai uh, that we've made with uh, the machine. Now over there is, um, over there is the, um, the Shanghai that we've hand processed. And all what you have there is the gushu. Uh, you have the the single trees here and all the mixed picking there. I'm going to go over uh, each of the area in more detail. But uh, today I think it's a good opportunity to take a look at the dry mautra, at the dry leaves. Okay, so we are going to start with the, the machine made tea. And um, well, actually I found out that it's not that easy by the look of the leaves to differentiate between uh, handmade tea and machine processed because once you do the rolling uh, you can't really make the difference so sometimes you can smell or uh, this one has a very nice very specific fragrance this must be from uh, Erdue. Um so well, if you look, the difference can be that usually our machine tea is processed uh, slightly greener uh, than uh, our um, handmade tea. But it, re it really depends on the technique you use. Uh, we can see here that some stems are, uh, are red. These are really, really long stems. And that's interesting. Uh, we had to turn on the machine maybe three days uh, during three days because we had too much tea at that time. So, um, yeah, what you have here is the production of, of uh, three days of uh, machine processing. And the natural tea gardens we source tea from, well, there are uh, four different tea gardens. Okay, uh, you can... So, they have... Um, pretty underwhelming names they are called like team one team two and team six like idwe odwe liodwe it's because uh well when they planted the um, when they planted the tea gardens they gave it that kind of factory style management and so each area was assigned to a specific team in the in the village and that's where the names come from. We really need to find more romantic names for these places. And actually there, there are, but uh, we need to do more research for this. So I think you can come here and um, I will show you something interesting in these uh, hand processed tea. This is from the same tea garden. This is Liu Dui, uh, our own tea garden. And this is the first batch that we've made in the season. That was on um, March 24th. And this batch is probably from uh, early April. And can you see the difference between those two teas? Look at this. On the left, you have this very early spring tea. And on the right, you have what would be the second flush. So the second flush is darker it has less buds as well uh, than the first flush now it's very confusing because there are several factors that uh, make the look of uh, Mao Cha. now 
Well, this is very bud heavy, but in part it's because um, the early the the earliest leaves look like this. They they tend to have to be more fury. They have more uh, more hair on the on the on the leaf, and also uh, it depends at which stage of the growth you harvest them. So it seems that that day on the twenty fourth of March. Uh, they harvested quite uh, tippy leaves, you could say, tender young leaves. So it really depends on each day. So if you look at each of these batches, mm, you will find out that uh, they all look different and it's actually very hard to find a logic behind their look because the look is the result of uh, many parameters. So, you know, when you meet people who tell you, oh, Gushu, uh, Gushu should have thick leaves, or Gushu should have uh, uh, thick veins, or uh, it should be hard uh, to tear apart the leaves, I think this is all bullshit. They obviously haven't been making tea in a factory every day, because every day the material you get is different. Now, I would say you could draw some general um, general lines on, on which you can think. For example, uh, forested tea will be greener, will be richer in chlorophyll, so it will have a darker green uh, than um, unshaded tea. And so unshaded tea tends to be more yellow and uh, if it lacks of uh, nitrogen, for example, it grows on poor soil. Uh, it will be even more yellow. So by the color, if you at least that's how it is in Jingmai. Um, but in many areas, for example, the gushu are not more forested than the small trees. So you can't use color to make the difference. Um, so we, well, by by looking like this, I'm surprised because in the end we made a lot of. Uh, we made, we made more machine uh, shangtai than a handmade shangtai, it seems. Uh, that shows how, um, how useful the machine is when we have a lot of, uh, a lot of production. And uh, I'd like to uh, taste the difference between these two batches furthermore. And I think what we'll do this year is that all the machine-made tea, we will press it into one type of cake and uh, the handmade tea will be used for our uh, typical Jingmai Mi Yun. So you will have two cakes of Shangtai at two price points and you'll be able to, ma to make the difference, hopefully. Now we can uh, have a look at the Gushu. So I've sorted it with each... Um, I've sorted it by, uh, by tea garden. Uh, so for example here we have Nogu Wan what, we have about 40 kilo of Nogu Wan. This is one of our garden. Uh, this is our only uh, ancient garden in uh, Tapingzhang. And uh, I, will, I will display a map for you of all the, all the tea gardens. You can see these uh, very well on Google Earth actually. So it's always cool to study their geography. So, well, oh, also something, handmade tea tends to have more huangpian, at least with our cooking style, because, uh, well, we like to cook it quite well, and it can create more huangpian. Also, uh, the amount of huangpian will depend on the, on the harvest, for example. This is, an, this is the, the early harvest before the rain of Gushu, and this is the same, so here you can see that was before the, the rain and this is the same tea after the rain. You can, yeah, it's really not obvious, but you can see it's, there's a slightly darker shade. This one is a bit greener. Uh, the tips are more fury. You can see if you look at the, if you look at the bag, here you, you have less uh, fury tips, less golden tips. You can also see that the even the Huangpian 
they look brighter in the, the tea before the rain. But again here the rain is only one parameter uh, but yeah it tends to to make the the rain tea after the rain tends to make the leaves uh, grow um, grow faster and therefore you have less buds and they look darker so it's a very nice garden um, this is Iban this is my favorite garden again you can easily see this is the the tea um, this is the first flash of uh, Iban and you can see a lot of uh, small tips and Hey, interestingly, no, actually, it's not the first flush. It's the yeah, it's all the first flush of Iban. There, it sprouted quite late, but you can see that this was made on the 9th of April, and this was made on the 12th of April. So it seems they they first picked mm, a part of the garden and then let it grow further, and then three days later, we um, we sourced this tea. Um, so sometimes they will do like this they will harvest uh, the first flush in uh, several goes if they think that uh, a lot of the flushes are too are not mature enough so we've made only three bags of Iban and what we made most is uh, is because we know uh, two farmers who we, we source um, tea leaves from so uh, yeah this is the the bulk of our production i could say uh but it's quite a vast area so we source from uh, two farmers and three tea gardens actually in or even four four tea gardens actually in hehuan yeah four tea gardens and three farmers we we source from one new farmer this year so it's interesting uh, it's really in the middle of middle of Tapingjiang, and uh, it's heavily forested there. So theoretically, since it's heavily forested, the leaves should look greener uh, than some other gardens which are less forested. And two of the gardens in there are quite difficult to access. There's no um, uh, there's no road on which we can ride motorbike, so we have to walk. But, well, compared to Yiwu or other places, it, it's still really easy to access in Jingmai. So I'm not going to complain here. And then, so He Huan has a very, has a very balanced taste. I would say not too much bitterness. The good, the typical Jingmai fragrance is present. You have a bit of everything in, in He Huan. So it, it works well, I, I think, as a base for our Gulan cake. Now here we're in Guangjing. Guangjing is just above the village. You can see the, the temple from Guangjing. And, um, well, it's a, it's a nice garden, uh, not too heavily forested, quite lightly forested. And uh, it has a particular fragrance, I would say. What defines this uh, this garden is the fragrance. You can see here that all the leaves are uh, quite small. On this bag, they look very very fury. Uh, it feels to me that the the shaching was uh, a bit uh, strong on what's on the top. Like it's a lot of Huangpian, and you have these very very tender it looks like one but two leaves but it seems to me that uh, on this batch the shaching was a bit strong maybe cooked too dry anyway so this uh, this is good for adding that typical jingmai fragrance because it's very intense uh, i think where it lacks is a bit on the chachi side and stuff this is wongbo so wongbo is uh you could say it's all the upper slopes that are around the village, uh, mainly above the village. So it's not purely, it's, it's not proper Taphingjiang here, it's not on the plateau. So you have much less organic matter in these soils because 
its heavy slopes and uh, and so um, the organic rat matter will run off so you have a sandy soil and no organic matter so you could say that's where you have the poorest soil here and Wongbo usually gives you uh, quite a strong bitterness compared to other teas so it uh, it's good it's kind of the salt of for gulan maybe it can add a bit of uh, a bit more bitterness uh, but it's also heavily astringent and to finish we have our our single trees here so all the the ones have been through so far uh, are from uh, they are what we call hunsai, it means like we pick all kinds of trees. So it will mainly be nowadays the medium, the medium and the small trees of the ancient tea gardens. And all the big trees, which make maybe what, 10% 10, 10 of the, the tea gardens, the, the, of the tea garden output, the really big trees, we pick them separately. Uh, so we, we've gathered a couple of them. Uh, we have way more this year I feel than last year what we must have maybe 25 kilo here maybe even 30 kilo so that's a good news we managed to get a lot of single trees production and this year we're trying a new one which is uh, Awadong so Awadong is a, a tea garden that we've never sourced tea from but we got a new contact and I think because it has a special taste I think I will not press it or maybe will press it as a unique cake or either sell it as mocha or make a small cake and the others I will blend them and make a, a single trees cake like we did last year and um, this is actually also gusu from uh, this one is uh, all the gusu from uh, Awadu so uh, yeah we've got that extra too and um, I don't know too much yet about this tea garden uh, so I need to do a bit more research do a bit more tastings and so that's it so that's about that's what uh, 500 kilogram of tea looks like so we're gonna taste them we're gonna taste uh, hopefully each of these batches check if there's no problem mm problem could be like a taste a burn taste like too much shatching or it could be um, um, a tea soup that is that is muddy uh, that could be a problem with drying for example or it could be also um, a problem during the rolling too heavy a rolling uh, if the leaves are are still warm can cause this problem Mm, and if there are any really outstanding batch we can also uh, consider um, selling it as mochra mm. so we will see we have to decide every year we have this dilemma and this is of course uh, this is somehow a bit heartbreaking because you you see all this diversity of teas and you'd be really happy to explore and compare each of these batches but in the end we have like what 60 different 60 different bags here but in the end you have to make the cakes you have to give up on this uh, diversity sure we we can take we can collect uh, one sample of each uh, bag as a, um, as a souvenir I would say um, uh, and we've, we've done this in the past years but I think what really matters is to to just try a lot of those teas and get a general feel of the garden uh, the problem is each factor is influenced by other factors of course and I would say if you want to know what uh, tea garden tastes like for example well you have to do a lot of tastings a lot of tastings that will depend um, whose whose result will be affected by weather by the the maturity of the of the leaves by your processing technique uh, just by by the vintage 
which means that if you really want to understand the taste of a tea garden, maybe you have to taste 20, 30 samples before starting having a, a conception of what this tea garden is. And that's why it's very slow research. And that's why even after years of tea processing, we keep uh, separating these batches. Because most farmers in Jing Mai won't do that. They just uh, uh, separate um, Gusu and Shangtai. So big, big like ancient tea gardens and young tea, young tea gardens. And they don't really explore the diversity of... Uh, of each of these tea gardens, which is a shame because there is a lot of things to explore in there. So I think that's about it. Now we're gonna start tasting these teas and tomorrow in the afternoon we will have decided on the, the blends we'll do. And the day after tomorrow we'll be sorting the Huang Pian and uh, then we'll take this tea to pour for pressing. So that's it. Uh, I hope you'll be uh, happy with the new harvest. I think overall it's really good quality, maybe even better as last year. So uh, I'm well. I hope you will like our new cakes. Meanwhile, we have a lot of tasting to do, so I'm gonna leave you here. Uh, thank you for watching, and see you later. Bye bye.